Previously on MasterChef Australia. Your time starts now. Come on, guys. The week got off to a flying start. It's time to hustle. Let's go, come on. Come on. Zumbo's pressure test put Alvin in a tailspin. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> and sent Doolan home. Yeah. Then. What is this? In a Beat the Chef challenge. Mud stone, everybody. Billy and Michael stunned the judges. We loved it. And took out a pin each. Tonight, it's a surprise service challenge with a massive guest chef. Absolutely fangirling. Can the fans defeat the favourites once again? try and predict it because oh, I think okay. like, I'll psych myself out when it's completely <laughs> something else. Wearing white aprons but it's Sunday. I don't want to be in another elimination right now. I feel like I haven't had a win yet and I haven't quite found my feet in the MasterChef kitchen so I want to really have a chance to impress the judges but I have no idea what they've got planned today. What do you reckon, John? <laughs> <laughs> what is it going to be? Oh my god. What is this? Oh, no. Ah. Oh my god, it's a service challenge. <laughs> oh, it is. Oh, oh my god. You're joking. There are tables and chairs all set up. Oh, they're pretty. It's a service challenge, and the tables and chairs suspiciously look like some European bistro. It's French. What the? the chairs are kind of French. Oh, it is. There's nothing European about it here, so I'm screwed. Stand up front. Good morning, everybody. Hi. Welcome back. Now, you've probably noticed one of us isn't here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, Jock is ill. Oh. He's resting up at home. And we are going to soldier on. It's me and you. <laughs> <laughs> but in Jock's absence, we thought we'd invite someone very special to join us oh. for a few days. Uh-oh. He's a friend of the show and a legend of this very kitchen. He's one of Australia's best-known chefs. He's the creative director at Voodamont. Yeah. Oh. Please welcome <laughs> Shannon Bennett. I am a huge fan of Shannon Bennett. I've eaten at Voodamont and it's just next level. I don't know how his brain works, but he is a magician. So this is epic. Oh my God. That's insane. <laughs> you guys, how are you going? Hey. How are you, mate? Good to you, see you. You too. Love the suit. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Shannon, it's an absolute delight to have you here in the MasterChef kitchen. Thanks, Belle. Yeah, it's good to have uh, familiar faces here as well. So actually, I mean Julie, Billy, and I'm looking forward to meeting some new faces as well. So, yeah. Billy, Shannon was no stranger to your season. Yeah, Shannon did the immunity challenges and it was always nice to have him here. He was always generous with his knowledge and advice and quite calming. Are you saying Jock's not calming? <laughs> Yeah, I'm liking this. This is nice. <laughs> Max, you're a huge fan of this show. You must have seen Shannon in this kitchen many times before. Uh, yeah, I've watched the show for many years and loved the episodes that you've been on, Shannon. And luckily, uh, eating that view as well. So I've had that experience, which was um, one of the top three culinary experiences I've ever had. So, Do you care to share where 
where in the top three you don't want to I, see. I, 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 I don't have children, but if I had three children, they'd all rank equally, and the top oh. three are... Good response. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Right, well, let's get started. It is Sunday, and we know you're expecting an elimination. But today, we're switching things up. If you couldn't already tell, this is a service challenge. And because Shannon's here, this is a service challenge inspired by French cuisine. Ah, cool. I'm really excited for French. It sort of forms the basis of a lot of cooking. You can use French techniques in any cuisine. You've got your super fine dining. And then on the other end, you've got classic French dishes that are really rich and heavy. And you can go really any way you want to in this challenge. French cookery is about curating ingredients with great technique. So today is going back to basics, but at the same time, using your instinct, whether it's going to be bistro food, whether it's going to be fine dining food, and I suppose it's really about how brave you're going to be. I've got some rules. Each team, they'll need to cook a French entree, main and dessert for 20 diners. Those that cook the least impressive entree, main and dessert regardless of what team you're on, they'll have to cook in tomorrow's mystery box in order to save yourself from elimination. Simply, if you win your course, you're safe. You guys will have two hours to prepare your elements until your service starts. Now, Tommy's ill today, recovering at home. So that means we've got uneven teams. 10 fans and 11 favourites. So, one favourite will need to sit out this challenge. You guys need to organise yourselves into who's cooking what course, and you guys need to sit a person out. Right, what do you want to do, guys? OK, Got first, let's decide on who wants to sit out. I've done a lot of cooking in the past week, so I'd be happy to, to sit out. Then, uh, entree, who's comfortable with entree? Four on entree, three for mains. Choosing our teams all happens quite naturally, I think. So it's yeah. me, Sarah, Aldo. We need one more. We all, get on yeah. all of us have just gone into the spaces that we feel a lot more confident. So I would do main. Yeah. I'd, I'd I'll do dessert. dessert. Yeah. yeah. So that's three. Yeah. yeah. What do we do? Do we? I don't know. No. I'll, 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 I'll go with. I'll go Matty Boy. I'm yeah. On entree. We, I might go with you guys on entree then. Mm. I'll go entree or no, not enough room. I've got no idea. Yeah. I was leaning towards entree today, but that decision was made for me. Do a main. Do a main. I just got sort of shuffled into mains. Seafood, bouillabaisse for mains. A what? Bouillabaisse. It's not my style of cooking at all, so I'm terrified. Where are we going? You're a main. And you're a main with us. Yeah. Are you? Are you okay? Yeah. Are you confident? <laughs> okay, favourites. Who is sitting out? Jules. It's <laughs> not hiding. And everybody else. You have full access to all of the ingredients in the pantry and the garden. Shannon will mentor you today and run the kitchen. Good luck, everyone. Your time starts now. Yeah! Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Right, where are we planning? Where are we planning? Let's yeah. do it. Hand them down. Go on, man. Here. Should we draw Okay, I'm thinking steak tartare. Steak tartare? Yeah, steak yeah, tartare. Yep, yeah. yep. On the entree team is Ali, Max, myself, and Jen. I feel it. I feel it probably. Steak tartare is finely diced raw beef uh, mixed through with fresh herbs, egg yolk. Has it got any truffles? Steak. Crispy potatoes. So we want it actually to be a, a crunchy, yeah. fat rectangle yeah, of potato with the steak tartare on top. I've only ever had steak tartare steak once in my life in a restaurant. I have no idea how to make it. Yeah, it looks good. Give it a little, like... A little line. Annotate it, annotate it. <laughs> annotate everything. French is all about the technique, so yeah. I think... So yeah, with that finesse. in mind, fish. Kind of, like, classic flavours, what are we thinking? Classic, like, salmon and, and, and a sauce. Yeah, uh, like uh, beurre blanc. Beurre blanc. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. It. On entrees, it is Christina, Eldo, Michael and myself. I mean, beurre blanc, like, it's a classic it French. It is done well, it's beautiful. Yeah. Talking about doing oh a beurre blanc wine-based sauce, which is going to coat that salmon beautifully. Just, like, little portion of, like, salmon that's just set. So it's not, yeah. like, cooked through at all. It's just set and, yeah, like, yeah. flaky. Quite a simple dish. It's about stripping it back and doing a few elements perfectly. So what, what do we do? 
What are we thinking? Okay, so we're thinking so... something like fish or meat? Main's team today is myself, Harry, and Kama. Uh, we're up against Sashi, Mindy, and Manoli. I don't think we need to go with fine dining. Home style kind of a yeah. food. As yeah. much as they like with their penis, but totally. they still love their home style also. On paper, it looks pretty bad, and if I was a betting man, um, I think they'd be paying pretty well. What's that fish in a fish in a wrap? Fish in a oh yeah, fish in a fish um, in a. In a Pip. Oh, Papio. Papio. Oh, Papio. Yeah, that one. So fish yeah. in a parcel. You so happy to do that? Parcel. Yeah. So the plan is to do a nice portion of fish and we can wrap it. That's French. But I have no idea what we're going to be serving that with. And then we need a fresh. Yeah, I think something to green, to like a... Pantry's like... open, gang. Go for it. Oh, my God. So what else? Right. Probably a zucchini or something. I'm going to go get... I'm yeah, going to go start with the fish. Uh... The lack of cohesion in our team today might show in our dish, but we'll just figure it out as we go. Seeing this beautiful piece of barramundi. Out of the barra, mother bloke. I hope I can do this fish justice today. It's French cooking, it's refined. I don't want to hack this fish up. I want to do a clean, consistent portion and steer this fish parcel dish in the right direction. Mel? Yeah? Do you want vanilla paste? Or... Yes. Yeah? Well, it should be enough. Steph, Montana and I are essentially the same desserts team that we in the first ever challenge. We won against Billy, Alvin and John last time, so I'm a bit worried they're going to step up the game. So today, our dessert needs to be amazing. I'll start separating eggs for us, Steph. Thank you. We want something rich, we want something sweet, but we also want to show lots of technique with textural elements as well as the flavour elements. I'm <laughs> just like, how do you... <laughs> Today, we are going to go all out. And I know I can do a really good chocolate from Moo. Yeah, we got it. It's a classic French dessert. It's a dark chocolate, kind of ganache, but lighter, almost like eating a really decadent chocolate mousse. We want to share that we've got the skills to go against the favourites. Montana. Hello. What's on the menu? So, chocolate cremo is like the focus. Yes. So Steph's working on that at the moment. Okay. Um, yep. We've got a cherry sorbet, a chocolate crumb, um, pistachio praline, pistachio praline, and a twill. And fresh cherries on the plate. Okay. A lot. Yes. There's a lot there. Why so many elements? So what? Um, we sort of want to hit all the targets of yeah, you know the fruitiness it's... and the richness, and and we want also the playing with the texture elements. French cookery, one of the great things about it is the simplicity of one recipe done perfectly. Yeah, yeah. But you want the chocolate to speak. Yeah. So you, sure. that there, you're going to a lot of work to make that beautiful and smooth and velvet-like. Yeah. And then you're going to interrupt that then with some crumb. I don't know, because we're going to sort of nest the yeah, sorbet sort of... in the crumb was the plan. I don't know. The cremo is the hero. Just remember that. I think you've got too much on the plate. Yeah. Okay. Good luck. Thank Thanks. you. Um, so what do we think? I like a crunch yeah. in a dish. We're in two minds at the moment. We're sort of still convinced we need that crunch element. But at the end of the day, Shannon is one of the best chefs in Australia. And we need to produce the best dish possible to be the favourite today. Um, Happy with this? Yep, that was good. All right, Alvin, Billy, you're on desserts. Well, yeah, we are. What's happening? So we're doing a little tasting plate. A tasting plate? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's little... like a petit four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we've got um, lemon tart, we've got a choux pastry um, with creme pat and yep. peach compote. Profiterole well. filled with like a peach compote. Yeah, and, and, a, and creme a creme pat crackling yeah. thing on top. Yeah. Crackling thing on top, you like know. a... Oh, what are you going to do, uh, Sable? Yes. Yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah. Wow. And we've got a macaron, a Calvados apple macaron. That's another recipe in itself, so that's yeah. like, wow. So, okay. Got to hustle. Yeah. OK. All right, well. Yeah. You are ambitious. Any advice? Uh, <laughs> don't do it. Sat nip fans. I told them French food is about being restrained. Ambitious, skillful, and you're passionate, right? Uh-huh. But you are now opening yourself up to so many elements here of failure. Yes. Yeah. And you've given the judges more room to have a go at you. Everyone, you've had 30 minutes. 
You've got another 90 minutes before the first entree is served. Let's push it. Ooh. Come on. Thanks, Chef. Thanks, Chef. Go, guys. OK. On entrees, it is Eldo, Christina, Michael and myself making a beautiful salmon dish with the bird blanc sauce. Let's see how's the wine. <laughs> Eldo and I are making the stock for the bird blanc, getting the bones from Michael and Christina. Do you mind just chopping those up a little bit more? They'll get more yeah, flavour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all about the flavour. It's getting that right hit of you know, the vinegar coming through. For me, I think it's all in the technique. It's all in being precise. I came ninth in season six. I think people would remember me for my passion for Indian cuisine. Straight out of MasterChef, I moved to India to open my first restaurant. It's crazy. Since then, I've opened three. Still running everything from here in Australia at the moment. How's everything going? Restaurants are doing well. I love Indian cuisine, but I also have such a huge passion for French cooking. How I first started off cooking was French cuisine. I went to Le Cordon Bleu and I really tried to hone my classical technique. What are you guys on the sauce or something? Yes, we're making a beurre blanc. The salmon bones were used. Okay, brilliant. So I think having that background knowledge of French cuisine combined with all the experience that I've had over the years has helped me to become the chef that I am today. Okay, so it's on. So I'm just hoping I can really prove to the judges that I am worthy of being here in the MasterChef kitchen again. Hey, Shannon, how are you? See you, mate. Okay. The favourites. Yeah. Tell me what you're doing. So with the entree, we're um, sous vide the salmon with a herb bird blanc. We're going to sous vide to about 46, so the salmon just sets, so it'll flake yep. apart. You're on the right track there, I, th I think, from a, a really classic French dish. I would remove the skin first. I hope that I can okay. show you a technique before you do it. Yes. To take away some skills is why I'm back here and to improve my cooking. And if Shannon Bennett's going to give you a bit of advice, you take it. OK, so you can see a line here. Yes. This yes. is the bloodline. Yeah. OK? This, will, this technique will stay with you forever. This is a way of skinning it as well. OK? And then stretch it out. And then under the skin here. Oh, oh Shannon, that's awesome. And there you go. You've got really nice, neat portions. Yep. All right, thank okay. you very much. Appreciate right. that. I'll keep thank an eye you. on you guys. Thanks, thank mate. Thank you so much. That's great. Love Such that. Such a good technique. Hello. Yeah. We're chopping a lot of things. I've given myself a blister already. We're doing all right, though. So I'm looking after entrees. Uh, Max is working on our like fresh uh, produce for the tartare and like separating eggs for the top. And Ellie and Jen are working on the potato. I've got no idea who we are up against today. I haven't paid any attention to them. Just focusing on getting this uh, fillet prepped. To have Shannon Bennett in the kitchen today, it is a bit of an honour because I've eaten it at Vuda Monde, which is one of Australia's premier restaurants, and loved it. So I really want to put up an amazing dish to win against the favourites and impress Shannon and the judges. All right, Matt, Max, what's happening? We're going to do a steak tartare, crispy potato stack. Crispy potato stack. Yeah, some shaved truffles on top as well, with a like a sous vide egg yolk on top. Basically, confeing them slightly so they got a slight skin on them. Well, yeah, go for that. As long as you can execute them. They've got to be perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, have you done that before? I've never done it, no. Yeah, OK. Never. I think your presentation is going to be crucial to this dish. And one of the other things is that you know that you can execute 22 of those plates. Yeah. Yep. So... Yep. Yep. Focus and good luck, guys. Thank you yeah. so much. No problem. I'll come and check in later. Yep, thank definitely, you. thank you. Okay. Steak tartare, to me, is quintessential French cooking. If we do simplicity but we nail it, it's a great dish. It'll be a great dish, which is what we're striving for. We need to get that fish rolling. Yeah. So I'm in the mains team with Dan and Kmart. Um, we're still going to do the fish and parcel and then the green beans with potato. We are still trying to work out what we're doing to be more traditional French. We're going to have to stop for a second and just kind of work out how we're going to pull it all together. Hey. So what, what's on the menu? Tell me. So we're doing um, un papio. On papio? Yeah. yeah, so fish and a parcel. Yeah, um, nice. Yeah. Some green beans in there and um, some nice crispy um, uh, goose fat potatoes. That's probably what we're leaning towards. Um, 
Yeah. So you've got the entree doing their beef tartare with crispy potato. Yeah. And then you're doing crispy potato for the main course. Yes. What about French mash? Yeah. yeah. You can do an amazing, like, Cornell side dish of pommes How do you feel about that, Harry? Happy? Yeah, we're doing mash. Yeah. yeah. So, fish in a parcel. Have you tried this technique before? I've done it with paper bark and um, banana leaf and stuff, but not like this. But I assume it's very it's similar. very similar. Very yeah, similar. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can show you. I actually use tin foil. I find tin yeah. foils easier. This is a great learning experience, getting mentored by one of the best chefs in Australia. So I'm just trying to absorb it like a sponge. Another two sheets on top. Two pieces. Of pieces, and then fold it on each side. Yeah, beauty. Right, and then you'll get a much better pillow. Thank you. Okay. Cheers. No problem. Thank you. Good to meet you. I'm in charge of the fish and fanging for a win. We're on a roll here, so we've finally figured out what we want to do. I want to try and prove that I can cook some good food and I want a little bit of redemption from the first service challenge. You know, I'm going up against Sashi again, and he's the man. So hopefully we can beat the favourites today. Everyone, you have one hour to go. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on. This what is the, the potato worker. I think we should patent this chin. Well, you're totally nice. Yeah, you like it? Mm. John, they look amazing. They're still a bit sticky, do you think? It's OK, because I think when you put filling in, you'll be fine. Be fine. You know what's the good news? What? The lamb is boneless. Oh, oh we. Oui. We are doing a dish called lamb neverin. Hopefully, I pronounced it correctly. My French is, oh, <laughs> it's not that great. <laughs> yeah. So it's a lamb, more like a stew. It's a celebration of vegetables and meat. Mindy and Minolni are prepping all the vegetables and herbs to go in the pressure cooker together with the meat, and I am prepping the lamb. I love cooking with lamb shoulders. Yeah, yeah. Like all my biryanis and um, even my curries in the restaurant. Yeah. We use lamb shoulders. This dish is a very rustic where everything goes into one pot, slow cooked, maximizing the flavors within the time given. Put everything in the pressure cooker. Oh, how are you going? Nice Hello. to meet you. Yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fangirling over Shannon Bennett. <laughs> so embarrassing. <laughs> Hello, lovely to meet you too. I, I'm a bit nervous. I don't <laughs> want to be distracting you. You're on the main course. What are you doing? I am doing, and I might butcher the pronunciation, lamb navarin. 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 Yeah. Navarin. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Good. So normally in navarin, if you're cooking it at home, it's a one-pot dish where you put your carrots, your onions, your garlic, your turnips. It's a, basically a classic stew, but in a restaurant, it goes up one level. Huh. Okay, so pressure start. start. Sashi, get oh, here. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Hey, Sashi, how are you going, mate? Good, sir. Uh, how are you? Lamb never in. Yes. One pot dish, normally. How are you doing? Uh, okay. So everything has gone into the pressure cooker. I don't know. I mean, what's the difference between this dish at home when I'm cooking it for a family or you're cooking it for your family? Yep. And a restaurant. Everything we thought about doing this dish has just been changed. Fresh cookers on, lambs in, turnips in, sauce is happening, but we're going to have to change this into a restaurant quality fine dining dish. Okay, guys, good luck. Thanks. All right, thank you. Shannon Bennett, he's the king of French food. If we don't listen to him, we're going down in a burning heap. We're doing the main rustic style French stew, lamb navarin. Originally, we were just gonna do it a one pot wonder, but Shannon suggested to elevate it to a French fine dining dish. They look gorgeous. Lamb's in the pressure cooker with the sauce, but instead of braising off the vegetables in with the lamb, we're actually going to keep them separate, letting the produce shine. All right, so we got a bit of work to do. The sugar snap peas are going to be split. Yes. These are going to be shaved. Roll. Like mandolin. Yep. We're going to keep at least one bit of green on, on the carrot. Got a fair bit of work to do to like make it in time for service. It's about technique and refinement and adding a little bit of finesse onto the plate. This is going to be down to the wire. Listen up, gang. You've got 30 minutes until the entrees leave the pass. Come on. Come on. You can put more butter in if you want. French cuisine equals carbs and fat. <laughs> oh, this one I don't think cooked at all. 
Yeah, so we'll go a bit longer. Potatoes are going to be good, Jen. I'm just going to do the truffles. Have you got truffles? Yeah. <laughs> Fancy. I know. Just make it rain. <laughs> oh, I know. Shannon. Come on, dying to hear what they're cooking. Oh, fill us All in. Right. Really good things happening. Should we start with the fans? What's their entree? Uh, it's beef tartare. And then on top of that, uh, they're going to go with a little egg yolk and then some crispy potato. Classic. Love it. Nowhere yeah. to hide, though. Yep. It has to be you know, yeah. perfect texture, perfect seasoning. Yep. Is it too safe, or do you think...? Well, the favourite entree is, uh, technique-wise, okay. a little bit more in there yep. because it's basically a, a piece of salmon yep. that is really slowly cooked. Fur blanc yep. with some herbs. Classic V, classic. I do like, like yes, it. Yes, I like it. Moving on to May. Mm. Yeah. The fans have got this on poppyette technique okay. with a piece of barramundi. You don't know how well that fish is cooked mm. until you open the bag. The technique then comes into it because it's going to be all in how that bag rises, really. What are the faves doing? Sashi is taking charge there, doing a lamb navron. A classic old school stew. He's put in the pressure cooker. He's got the sauce making at the same time. It sounds pretty rustic. Like... To take it to a restaurant level, yeah. it's all in the way you present it with yeah. those vegetables. And to finish, what's going on with sweets? Well, listen, a lot of ambition there. I've told them, like, pair it back. Being really confident in one or two techniques, I think that's going to be very crucial. Yep. You know, the devil's in the detail on how, how much they can nail the technique to make the produce sing. I reckon that's who's going to take this one out. Mate, you have some serious work to do. Thanks, guys. Good Thanks luck. for the chat. Thank you. Oh, nice. So we are doing a chocolate and cherry dessert. So we've got the chocolate cremo as the focus, cherry sorbet to go with it, fresh cherries. Mm, they're beautiful cherries. And then we're tossing up on a crunch element. We've got a pistachio praline. We've got a chocolate crumb. We've got a twill. We've got creme fraiche. I just think we need to scrap something. She's like, he's literally Shannon Bennett. Mel, Steph and I, I think we're all sort of a mentality that more is more rather than less is more. So I think the challenge for us is going to be deciding what to take off rather than to put on. So Nick's the twill and the crumb. Um, I guess Montana has made the chocolate crumb. I've finished making the pistachio praline. Melanie's done a beautiful twill, but we've decided to ditch it all. I just am worried it's really simple. How did I end up making the sable again? Jesus. I'm a bit worried that this is too ambitious as a dish. We're making a petit four, so these three little dessert. But John is very knowledgeable, so is Billy. I'm sweet. <laughs> We've got the apple compote sort of happening now. The macarons are done. The choux pastry profiterole just cooked one batch. Uh, the tart shell is baking. Um, the creme pat is done. I'm working on the sable. The sable is a little disc that sits on top of the shoe pastry that melts away as you bake it and gives it that crackly sort of effect. We're forging ahead, Shannon. You're doing all three? Yeah. OK, so you've, you've basically thrown my advice in the bin. No, no, no. no. I'm only joking. No, I'm only joking. No, 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 no. They looked really good, though, those macarons. Did the profiteroles turn out OK? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're great. Calvin, they're awesome. They're nice and crispy. Yeah. The tart turns out well. Yeah, nail them. Thanks, Shannon. No pressure. <laughs> Have people arrived yet? No. Are they late? <laughs> Fans, favourites, the time has come. The diners have arrived. Yeah. Diners are coming in. We know it's getting close to service. It's good. Delicious. Sir. Oh, it's really good. Mm. Our steak tartare mixture is done, but the egg is missing at this point. Yep. Max has got this stressful job of dealing with the confit egg yolks. Sorry, quickly. Do we want the eggs to go to 63? No. Okay. No, no, no. There are 57. They just need a skin. They just need a skin. Have a look at them. Have a look at them. All we need is a little skin on the outside. Sure. So that it's not a raw, raw egg. Take them out, okay. no. Done. I'm taking them out. Plating up. We're going to go for a more classic tartare style, which is in a ring mould. And then you make the little nest. We're going to do a nest of potato, put the egg yolk on with the shaved truffle on top. Let's just get cracking. Max, I think you're all good to go. I've become the egg man. I don't eat eggs. I don't like them. I overate them as a kid and I don't eat them anymore. Max, just quick, we just need to get the yolks on. Spoon into. Yep. Spoon into hands. And then on. Oh, that's going to be hard. Oh my God. If the egg yolk breaks, it takes away the whole experience from the diner. They're the ones that should be breaking through and mixing it through the mince. Okay. 
Come on. Ah, yeah. Oh my god. To the break? Yeah. It's okay. I got it, I got it, I got it. Have another go. I've got to get this right, but egg yolk is actually the binding agent of the dish. You need to replate them, you need to replate them. Yeah. We've just really got to get these out. That one's broken. Do we have enough yolks? Have we got enough? We're running out. <laughs> I swear to God. So this one's broken. Do you want me to just scrap it onto something else? There's no chance I'm serving steak tartare without the egg yolk on top. Come on. I need a bit of help. We're going to have to redo those whole dishes. It's those eggs that are going to do us in. But I'm running out of egg yolks at a very quick rate. And they're still not there. Yeah. You don't have enough egg yolk? No, the yolk's all breaking. Do you want me to crack more yolks now? Definitely crack a few more. Yeah. Definitely. We want to see food flying off that pass in five minutes. Come on! Remember, we're doing it for Julie as well. Excellent. <laughs> for Julie to stay out of the mystery box cook tomorrow, two teams have to win from the favourite. Mama Jules. Mama Jules. I want to win today. I don't want to be in the Alin cook. Go! Go, team! <laughs> Come on, guys! Uh, should we go? Yeah. This is crunch time for our salmon dish. It's time to start pulling together the bird blanc. A little... Please. Uh, yeah. I'm a you clean up girl. The key with this is really beautiful herby flavours coming through, so we want that last minute so they stay fresh, stay green. It's looking good, actually. Yeah. It's looking it's really looking good. It's looking so good, yeah. guys. I'm going to taste did it. an amazing job. Wow, what a team. Ah, so it's not split. No. <laughs> we recommend finger limes just at the end for, for a pop yeah. okay. Rather than adding caviar, we've changed it up to add finger lime. I think it will elevate our dish and modernise it with that Australian touch, which is really cool. Good teamwork. <laughs> Please. Let's win now. <laughs> Elders also cooked fried capers, and we're just hoping that all of the salmon is cooked perfectly. Come on, you cry like a machine, sweet machine, go. There's still two minutes to go. Give it one more minute. Yeah. It's stressing me out so much. I know. The kitchen is smelling good. We're hungry. One minute to go. Come on, give us the French food. Let's take it out. Perfect. Yeah. Take off the potatoes. Just haven't got time, Max. We've just really got to get these out and really under the pump zone. We've got enough to redo it if we need. Give me, give me one sec. Fine. There we go. That one's good. They're holding. I don't know how they're holding. They are completely yeah. holding. The egg gods are looking down at me. I think it was a little sigh relief there from Shannon too. Hey, well done, well done. Jen, that one can okay. be truffled. Yeah. Quickly and get it out before it pops. Quickly. Super fast, because these babies are going. But they're holding. They are holding. Finally, I've gotten an act of it. Come on, diners! Ten, nine! That's plenty, yeah. Plenty. All right. Beautiful, guys. Service. Service, please. We're on a roll now. Let's keep going. Well, what are we looking for today? It is a French service yeah. challenge, so technique, beautiful balance of flavour. I, I reckon restraint. It's a celebration of produce with technique, but you need to be restrained to make those two things the hero of the dish. You win your course, you and your teammates, they are safe from elimination. Okay. Truffle. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Right, so 
So from the fans, an entree of steak tartare with crispy potato and, in case you couldn't guess, <laughs> truffle. <laughs> it's a healthy dose of truffle, that's for sure. Looks pretty classy, egg yolk on top. Nice um, little nest of crispy fried potatoes. Yeah, and I must say, pretty skillful to get that egg yolk on a nest of crispy potatoes. There's a few jagged edges in there. Should we go in? Yeah. I think, for me, the tartar mix is nice, mm. but because of the egg yolk, it gets diluted so yeah. much. I think what the yolk gives in richness, it takes away mm. in terms of seasoning. We love a fried potato. The flavour of fried potato is quite pronounced. It's a good tartare without being an amazing tartare. I'll tell you what I, I did like, which I didn't think I was going to, was a truffle. <laughs> I was wondering whether it was just going to be truffle for fun or truffle yeah. for flavour, and it gave a really nice umami hit. What was going to be paramount here was the balance. I really think that this is a case of tasting individual elements but not experiencing the dish as a whole, because yeah. had they have known what the yolk would do, they should have compensated by more aggressively seasoning the tartar mix. Beautiful. Oh, that looks so good. Sprinkle of the capers as well. Aldo and Sarah have done an amazing job on the Beurre Blanc sauce. How's the next batch going? Good. Now the pressure's on to match it with that really beautiful flaky salmon. Each portion has to be cooked perfectly. Is it cooked? I think so. What do you mean, think? The problem with cooking fish at such a low temperature is it doesn't really change colour like it would if you cooked it in a hot pan. It sets. A few more capers? Yeah, yeah. I think I've got the feel, but there's a couple of pieces that are making me a little bit nervous. Service. My only concern is that the fish was under. Yeah. Right, good to go. Yeah. Thank you. Come on, well done, Blue. Just give me a little bit more in here. What do we got? What do we got? Oh. Thank you very much. Well, this is from the favourites, salmon with fine herb burblock. I reckon it looks apart. Looks very, simple. very nice. Simple. What about the smell? Yeah. Perfume from those fried capers. Yeah. Should she we dig it? She looks French. <laughs> but how is the fish cooked? just set. How's yours? I think it's just set. I'm enjoying this. He's nodding. You can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> what about that sauce? I think the Ben Blanc is absolutely gorgeous. It's such a lovely lemony acidity about yeah. it. It's silky smooth, completely together, not a hint of a split in sight. And then the punctuated pops of crunchy fried capers, texture and flavour and seasoning. Yeah. Gorgeous. I absolutely love that. Like, that, for me, is the definition of French cuisine. There's technique, which they have nailed, but also simplicity. And who would have thought two elements could just have so many twists and turns along the way? And then the salmon. It was cooked absolutely perfectly. You don't even need the knife. It just yeah. sort of cleaves off itself. Mm. And you just have these beautiful flakes of just tender, just set, yeah. beautiful, flashy salmon. Yeah. And then you get to that fully loaded bird blanc. <laughs> Perfect texture, silky. Yeah. So then the pops for me of the tarragon versus the fried capers yes. and the chives. Mm. Massive punch of lemon. That's close to a perfect French dish in my, in it's my opinion. It's very much an iron fist in a velvet mm. glove because it's so elegant, so simple. And then when you dive into the details, the flavours mm. are leaping off the page, definitely leaping out of the bowl. Yeah. Mm. That bird long is perfect. The finger lime as well is so good. 
I think you, you've done really well. Thank you. I mean, it's and you hit the brief. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, my fingers crossed for you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. You couldn't have done Thank any more. You. Well done. Wait, well, you happy? Did, did you like her? We'll let you know. Uh, you didn't lick the ball, though. Whatever happens, I feel really proud of what we've put up, and we can just relax now. I feel for the others. There is a lot of pressure. It's like cooked. I think it's cool. I'm on the dessert tasting plate. I'm in charge of the lemon tart. I want the curd nicely set and the pastry thin and crisp and cooked all the way through. Is the tart going to be a bit blonde? Yeah. They're cooked? Yeah, the I'm just, cooked. That's just good. Um, pu punching it down a little bit. Yeah. It's always the way in the MasterChef kitchen towards the end of the challenge. Something always goes wrong. I'm trusting you on this one. The crampets actually a little bit runny. Um. The lemon thyme crampet for the shoe bun hasn't quite set properly. It's just not thick enough. I think there's a part of us that wants to prove that we can do something big and we are ambitious. But now I'm starting to worry that we're trying to achieve too much. They've got little cakes. They do? Yeah. I think they've also got a macaron, haven't they? They've huh? also got macarons. There's a few big ones. I can see that the favourites have got three technical desserts. At the end of the day, we need to trust our instincts. Our dessert has morphed into something that was pretty complex to something that's very simple. We've only got the cremeau, the cherries, and the sorbet on our plate. Then the creme fraiche, blob in the centre, and then the cherries kind of stick to it from the outside, and that's how it holds in. With a simple dish like ours, everything has to be perfect. Yep, you go. Yep, that's it. I think we can all do them. Yep. Happy? Yeah. Right, done. <laughs> the main course, lamb never in, from a rustic dish, we are going into a very refined concept. Gorgeous. For the vegetables, Mindy and Minoroni are trying to make it as elegant as possible. Cooked perfectly to the crunch. The lamb from the pressure cooker falling apart, cooked perfectly. Now I'm going to strain the liquid to be reduced to get a nice, thick, glossy sauce. Sweet. Mm, so sweet. From my understanding, French cuisine is all about heroing the produce and they put a lot of butter. Have you got butter in there, Sam? Butter, butter, butter. Butter, 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 butter. Butter everywhere. I'm doing the main dish with Harry and Daniel. Fish on papillot with green beans and pomme puree. French mashed potatoes is just so buttery. Oh, my God. A lot of butter coming in to play with this to make it really silky and smooth. When you taste it, it's almost like eating butter. Delicious, but still really, really rich. This is why the French can eat so much butter. Yes. Oh. But they, they eat small amounts of yeah. that. So you think it's a lot, but it's actually not, because you're not eating a huge portion. So there's yeah, going to okay. be more butter than that, though. More butter. Yeah, 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 yeah. More butter. A lot, lot of yeah. butter. Harry's doing the dressing of the beans. There's um, anchovies, uh, chalots, mm -hmm. capers, capers, nice, good butter, no butter, no butter, uh, anchovy oil, like the oil from the anchovy tins. Anchovy oil, oh, okay, Tarragon, very oily, parsley. It's really nice. Yeah. Uh, do you know how long our test has got? One minute thirteen. Yeah. Dan is taking quite a long time with the fish, but we need that main part of the dish perfect. Not too tight if you can. Uh, how did the, the little tester go? It's just about done. I love my fish. I love cooking it. I love catching it. So I think the pressure today is, it's a bit more personal. I really want to nail this fish. We put it in for six, let it rest for two. Doesn't sound very long. Um, Barramundi's one of those fish you've got to cook all the way through. Yeah, no, that's not done. Oh, I'm shaking in my boots. I've got to finish wrapping these fish up and jam them in the oven so that they're cooked for another probably double the amount of time. We've got 20 diners and we're running out of time here. We need a lot of trays. Yeah. 
It's giving me anxiety. Hey, Manoli, we're just going to play it up, babe. Yep. It's time to play the lamb navarin. So now I'm nervous. How do we take it from a home-style dish to a restaurant-quality dish? The peas and the carrots really quite simple. You know, we haven't done too much to each ingredient. Every single pea and carrot and turnip has to be perfect. I need a scoop. This dish has become so refined, but the sauce needs to bring the whole dish together. The sauce it needs to thicken a fair bit more. It should not be like a soup. It's a stew. It should be thick. Uh, adding a bit of flour to thicken it. Then I'll strain it. I know that the sauce will take some time. So getting it done before service is going to be a big challenge for us. Nah. No? No. Hey, guys, start plating. Let's go. OK. Service is beginning and our two sides are ready to go. The beans will be super crunchy and we're going to dress them in a really beautiful anchovy and tarragon sauce. This is just gonna add some really bright acidity to the dish. That's nice. So the pom puree is the most insanely delectable potatoes that you could ask for. It's awesome. That mesh looks so good. This is sick. Yo. Yeah, it's go time. But after the test star was undercooked, the fish is really, really down to the wire. It's always really nerve-wracking cooking something that you can't see how it's cooked until that final moment. Happy? Um, it's cooked bang on. That's perfect. Is it? We are so relieved. Moist, though. It's really good. Oh, it's in my timer. Now we need to pull the fish out of the parcel and place it on the plate next to the potato. We need them to be picked up quickly, get them out. We've got to smash it out pretty fast. And you've got to hurry. All your beautiful work is in that bag. Yeah. So you've got to hurry. Yeah. Hurry. You've got to hurry. The fish is still cooking in that foil. Service, please. Yeah. I've only done like four, maybe six. And they've got lots to do. We should probably get these off these hot trays, eh? You end up doing lamb or beef? Lamb. Lamb. Lamb, never in. The sauce is thick and glossy. Mine's away, mate. Let's go. Yes. OK, let's do it. The original dish is need to have a pool of sauce together with the meat. But now, since it's a bit more refined, we are just coating it with the sauce and placing it nicely around. Nice. It's even more delicate than we started. Far out. It looks so beautiful. It looks so elegant. It looks very fancy very unlikely of Sashi of doing this. At this point, I just hope all these flavours has come together properly. All right, service. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Bella. Thank you very much. So this is from the favourites, and we have lamb nabaran with seasonal vegetables. How do you pretty up what is ostensibly a stew. Yeah. What do you I, reckon? I think they've done a good job. I think it's one thing to pretty it up, but is it going to have the same effect as that really rustic family style dish? Let's see how she tastes. Let's go. Oh, fat lamb sauce. Yeah. The lamb is outstanding. Like, fall apart, beautiful, gelatinous. The peas, beautiful amount of crunch. Same along with the carrots. The contrast of the slightly blanched vegetables, I think, gave a really lovely crunch. I think when you have such stewed textures on the plate, uh, yeah. you want to have that contrast. I'm wondering whether or not it's a little bit shy on the seasoning itself. 
For me, it could have done with a touch of acidity just to kind of lift everything up. I think they've kind of got like 80% there. I think all in all, it's a very pleasant, well-executed plate of food. Elegant to look at. Nearly there in terms of the flavour and the execution, definitely French. All right, make it perfect, mate. Sorry, that's There's a two-amp fuse that's about to snap in my head, and I'm trying to just stay calm. Mate, you've got to get those out. Got to hurry. Got to push. Got to be real careful as we're pulling this fish out not to ruin the quenelle or pour juice all over it and make a big bloody mess. Got to go, got to go, got to go. I'm worried that some of the fish have been too long in the alfoil. Guys, we need that fish to go make it happen. If we serve up overcooked fish to the judges, we're going to be in trouble. is barramundi served with green beans, tarragon and anchovy sauce, and a pom puree. I like the look of it. Mm. Yeah, I think it's really simple. The pom puree, quite glossy. And then the beans look really nice as well. I can't wait to see what that fish is cooked like, because that is the thrill of en papillon. Thank you very much. Big time. <laughs> Righto, I'm going in. Yeah. I'm going to start with the two sidekicks because they were, like, unbelievable. That mash was silky, it was smooth, it was rich, it was also light. That may be the best puree I have ever eaten in the MasterChef kitchen. I'd agree, yeah. The texture, the richness, the seasoning, yeah. perfect. The beans, beautiful and al dente. And then that anchovy dressing with parsley and lemon and just lifted everything, and that's probably what you need when you're dealing with such a heavy mash like that as well. And the cook of the fish. I could barely fault. Spot on. I love that, the, the lemon on top, really sharp. I think it's really well done. All in all, beautiful conception. Yeah. Very, very fresh. Well done, that was hard. That was really hard. <laughs> that was almost stressful. It was the first time. <laughs> Today, it's been a lot of pressure that I put on myself going up against the favourites. Well Thank you. I'm cooked. Uh, uh, I'm more cooked than the fish right now. I found that it's so stressful. I just need to go and steam off somewhere and go and <laughs> relax. Look at the teamwork. Oh, look at the cinnamon through it. Then my eyes are watering. Maybe I'm getting emotional about the team. Oh. No, you're, you're never emotional. So we've got all our dessert elements miraculously done. And then the calvados in the middle. Uh-huh. Perfecto. We're currently doing the macaron filled with apple compote. Sort of feels like you're eating an apple pie. Wow. Well, John, that's really good. We've got a peaches and cream shoe. We've got a uh, lemon tart. And Billy's actually making meringue to top it up like a nice crown. Snatch that crown. Um, we should try this. I've eaten a lot of food. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> mm. The favourites have done a lot. It's a bit intimidating. Oh, that peach. Yeah, yeah. Peaches and cream. Happy with that. 
We've literally nixed more elements than we are planning to put on the plate. And we really want to rely on the produce to speak for itself. It's the cremo, fresh cherries, a little bit of creme fraiche and a cherry sorbet. We had such a clear picture originally that it was really hard to pair that back. And I don't blame us for that because that does take knowledge and restraint and experience to figure that out. They're so pretty, Steph. I'm really glad that in the end, we took Shannon's advice to focus on the simplicity of those ingredients. Really, all you've got to do now is just focus on those cornels. Set yourself up, move along, you'll be fine. I'm really happy with the way that we hit the brief. The flavour is important, but it's also a bit of a play on temperature because the cremo should be soft and room temperature. Is it soft enough? Is it too hard? It'll be okay by the time it goes out. The cherries will have a little bit of bite, and then the sorbet is this really vibrant, cutting, cold edge that the whole dessert is going to benefit from. Yeah, that's it. The components that we thought originally were necessary, oh, they're not necessary. Even if we don't win, I can take that home and feel pretty awesome about it. But I think we sort of pulled it off, and it's beautiful. Service, please. There's a lot of technique in what you guys have done. A lot of technique. Thanks, Thank Shannon. you. Pulled it off. Service, please. Nice. It's nice, isn't it? Mm. God, I hope we win. Offering of dessert, uh, Hetty Four, apple calvados macaron, lemon tart, and shoe pastry with peach. I think there are some very generous Hetty Four. They are, they're very generous. But technically, they look pretty good. Nice feet on the macaron. Mmm. Where, Where do you start? Where do you start? <laughs> you I take think the I lead. have to start with the macaron, right? right? One from one. One from one. Very good. That is a very that good macaron. Like an apple pie yeah. cloud. Yeah. Where are you going next? I think you leave the lemon to last, right? Right, lemon to last. You're driving <laughs> the bus. She likes it. She's got the giggles at me. She likes it. Wow. Let's start with the macaron and you go because you've eaten a million over I have time. eaten easily a million macaron in my life. The flavour and the texture was absolutely perfect. You had that gorgeous shell on the outside, yep. that lovely almond shoe on the inside, and feeling beautifully balanced. You know, chewiness that I love with macarons. It was, it was unbelievable. That's a 10 out of 10. OK, let's move on to the shoe. Perfect shoe. The cracklin yep. was gorgeous. It was light, it was airy. It had that beautiful hollow shell that you want. Mm -hmm. And then the filling was slightly off balance. I think I wanted more peach. Lemon OK, tart. lemon tart. Look at it. It's glossy. The yeah. texture was amazing. And then the meringue on top, absolutely yep. perfect. It was light, it was airy, it was sweet enough without being too over the top right. and heavy. Underneath that curve, which is sharp, it fights the battle of being, you know, sweetness to acidity absolutely spot on. But the base is just a touch blonde. And we're talking like, you know, if you were to score this out of 100, it would be like a 98. Yeah. There's those two points which may or may not make yeah. a difference. The dessert from the fans is three elements. Can they get all of them absolutely perfect? So, please. Nice. Thank you very much. 
art. Okay, from the fans, chocolate cremo and cherries. Very, very elegant. Does it taste as good as it looks? Hope so. Yeah. Cremo is all about that beautifully velvety, creamy, rich texture. A turbocharged, bitter chocolate flavour. Gorgeous tart cherries. And then that beautiful cherry sorbet, which was silky, it was smooth, and it was sour. Yeah. Restraint is paramount mm -hmm. when we talk about French cuisine. I think... I'm going to just say it right now. This this is dish of the day. Yeah, I agree. Well, it's perfect, so... Easy. Yum. Service, please. <laughs> Those three girls have learnt a lesson that takes chefs years to learn. You know, you're always putting on way too many things and there was talk of crumbs and twills and I think there was a praline at some point. Wow. But they've stripped it all back and they're just left with simplicity and perfection. You don't need to do anything else. When the produce is that good and your technique is that good, that's when French food is at its best. Oh, my God. Well done, guys. Well done. There's no denying we set the bar very high today. We threw you into the deep end with Shannon Bennett and a French service challenge. Shannon, how do you think they went today with this challenge? Brilliant. You stuck to the brief, you listened, which is really important, and you use your experience. So I enjoyed it, and so well done to you all. Thank you. Come on, all right, let's get down to business. You want your course? That means you're safe from the next elimination. So we'll start with entrees. Fans, your entree, it was tasty. But once the egg was mixed through the tartare, actually threw out the seasoning and the balance of the dish. Favourites, your salmon and beurre blanc. It was simple, but it was perfect. And that's why you guys won the entree. to the main course, and this was a tough one. Favourites. There were no great faults with your lamb. But even though it was executed well, the flavours didn't exactly jump off the page for us. Fans. The main star of your dish, the barramundi, was cooked beautifully. And the supporting acts, the green beans and potato puree, were absolute winners. And that's why you won the main course. I've been fanging for a win, and that I did not expect that. So it was tough, eh? Like it, it pushed me a bit. Um, I was trying to stay calm, but 
that's really out of my comfort zone, and now it's, it's like harder than nailing jelly to a tree is. It was tricky, <laughs> but I mean, I can't believe we managed to win, so I'm pretty, I'm chuffed. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, well done, Daniel, because it was, uh, you're a great listener, and I think that's what got you through. So, thanks, thanks yeah, very well much. Done, mate. Cheers. Righto, dessert. Fans. You guys couldn't have played it more simple. Crema, sorbet, cherries. That's it. Favourites? You guys bit off a lot. You made macarons, you made a lemon tart, you made meringue and choux. Honestly, we were so worried that you'd be totally overwhelmed by it all. But in the end, you nailed almost every detail on that plate. It was unbelievable work. The fans put up the most restrained and delicious dish of the day. And that's why fans... You guys won the dessert. <laughs> Same team, basically the same team again. I'm um, feeling really, really happy. I can't really believe it. So that means Michael, Aldo, Christina, Sarah, Daniel, Harry, Kama, and of course Melanie, Stephen, Montana. You are all safe. You can relax and spend the next couple of days up on the gantry. <laughs> For everyone else, including, unfortunately, Julie, you'll be cooking in tomorrow's mystery box in order to save yourselves from competing in the next elimination. Good luck, go home, get some rest, and we'll see you tomorrow. Great stuff today, guys. Really good cooking. We are disappointed. We thought we were in for a red hot chance today. What a bummer. We had fun and we got to pick up and soldier on. Sorry, Julie. Oh, don't, don't be silly. It's all good. This week on MasterChef Australia. All the way from LA, it's got a stone. More superstar chefs. Please welcome Reynold Van Norman. Super-sized challenges. I'm putting everything that I have on that plate. And supercharged emotions. 